Today we're going to finish the flip back sketchbook. It's a fairly standard case binding except for the wide flap at the front that allows the front board to um, fold around to the back. So that's the main thing that we have to take into consideration in the design. Also the format is a bit different to most books and that's something you just have to be careful with in the construction. Last week we finished up at having glued down the reinforcements onto the outer flyleaf, which will become the paste down. We'll start today by cutting the front and rear boards. Now the grain direction is in the short dimension of the board this time. It's just something to keep in mind. So I'll start by truing up an edge and then cutting them to the correct height. I'm adding three millimeter squares. So I measured the height of the text block and then added two times three, six millimeters to get 131 millimeters. I'll true up one end on each board, but I won't cut them to length until I join them in the middle and then I'll take the measurement from the text block. But I will shorten these boards. I'll cut them so that uh, they're not unwieldy long, but I'll make them so they're longer than the text block. And then I'll, as I said, trim them to the correct length once we've joined them at the spine. Now's a good time to mark the front and back boards. The book didn't really have a front and back until right now. One of the end papers has a bit of a mark on it, so I made that the, the back end paper. Now this book isn't backed, it doesn't have shoulders, but it does have swell. It's rounded and it's got this swell, so it's sort of got a gentle shoulder. So what I've done is just gently sanded uh, or rounded the edge of the rear board that's going to go into that very gentle shoulder. Now we need to determine how wide the wide groove is at the front. So I'm measuring the distance around the spine of the book and it's that flap of material is going to be that distance plus two board thicknesses. So the board is two millimeter board and it was 26 millimeters around the spine, so that's 30 millimeters. So I'll mark 30 millimeters from the shoulder. This will be where the edge of the board is. Now I want to determine the width of the cloth at the spine. So I want that to extend a quarter of the width of the book. So I measure from the outside of the spine to where the edge of the board will be. I divide that by four. And then I add three millimeters for the overlap between the board paper and the cloth. So now I'm going to put the board in position and then mark that. So that's where the cloth is going to go onto the board. And we want the cloth to go the same distance on the other side. So we put the board in position about a millimeter away from the shoulder and then measure that same distance. Now hopefully that matches up front and back. Now we want to make some measurements. So we need to get the boards in place and then hold them firmly in place and then wrap a strip of paper around the spine and then mark all the locations. So we need to mark where the cloth will go to, where the edge of the boards are and the shoulder of the spine. And then we can cut the spine cloth the spine stiffener and a spacer for positioning the two boards. So we'll start by cutting the spine stiffener. So that's the narrowest strip from shoulder to shoulder of the book. I'll just cut that from some vertically grained manila card. Cut the spine stiffener to the same height as the boards. 
Now we'll cut the spine cloth. We'll make it a bit higher than we need. So we'll do 15 millimeter turn ins, so we need at least 30 millimeters. So make it 50 millimeters extra vertically, but width wise, it's what we measured on the strip of cloth, which was 116 millimeters. The final thing we need to cut is a spacer that we'll use in constructing the case. So we'll just use a piece of scrap board and cut that 55 millimeters wide, which is what we measured off the strip of paper. Now, instead of measuring it and then transferring the measurement, you could just use the piece of paper to measure that. Okay, now let's start putting it together. So I'll just mark where to put the adhesive and then lay that on the board. Now we'll attach the second board and that's where the spacer comes in handy. We'll put a ruler along the bottom edge of the board so that we get the two boards aligned. So just glue out the cloth and I put a little bit extra on the board just to make sure it sticks well. Use your bone folder to define the front shoulder really well. Now we'll put the spine stiffener in place. So we want that about a millimeter away from the rear board. I put a bit of moisture on the side away from where I'll add the adhesive. That will cause it to um, balance out the swell from the adhesive and it'll stick better. Now we'll trim up the turn-ins with my 15 millimeter gauge, which I've just made out of a scrap piece of binder's board or grey board, and then do the turn-ins. Now in that wide flap area, the cloth will want to bulge out. So pull it in gently. You don't want it to, to curve in, uh, but you do want it straight. Now we can trim the boards to length. So put the text block in position, push it back into the case and hold it firmly and use your knife to mark the square. So the same three millimeters out from the fore edge of the book. Holding it firmly, flip it over and do the same for the front. Now using whatever method you use, uh, cut the ends of the boards off square. Now we can finish covering the case. So cut a piece of cloth larger than you need. Or, or um, Decorative paper, if you've got a nice paper that you want to use for the covers, you could use that as well. I like to put a couple of prick marks three millimeters in from the edge of the cloth to help me line up the board cloth. And then I crease the cloth around the edges of the board just so I know where to apply the adhesive. Thank you. 
Trim up the turn ends all the way around and then cut the corners at 45 degrees, uh, one and a half board widths away from the corners, which would be three millimeters. Though I do judge this by eye, I always cut that by eye. I explain in the video on cloth corners why I cut the corners by eye, um, but it's about uh, speed and how speed often improves quality in book binding and how there is a bit of forgiveness in this measurement anyway. So now it's a matter of turning in the turn-ins. So do head and tail first and then the four edges in the usual way. Now it's time to case in. When casing in the standard case bound book, I tip in the text block at the shoulders with PVA. And this just makes the casing in job much easier. Now there's no shoulders really on this book, but I'm gonna use the same technique. I'm just gonna use some PVA, a strip of PVA at the spine, and I'll do it for the rear first. So I'll put the text block in position and then I'll let that key in. So I'll give it five minutes and then I'll do the same for the front. Because of the landscape format of this book, it's very easy to get the text block crooked into the case. So this technique uh, just helps with uh, avoiding that. Where I've added the PVA is where the reinforcing cloth is on the end papers. And that makes it a little easier to uh, pull the, the cover back off if it's not aligned correctly. Whereas you can't really do that with paper. So I, I put a piece of card there to push that down nicely with the brick. Now I'm gonna trim up these end papers just one millimeter because I do know that they will stretch about a millimeter. So I've just trimmed them off. It's easier to trim them up now than after you've cased in. So now I'm going to case in with paste. Uh, just again because you can get these in a bit crooked and it's easier to do something about it if you're using paste instead of PVA. You could use mix as well. If you do need to smooth out any wrinkles in the paste down, you should do it on the edge of the bench and not on the bench like I'm doing here. Uh, though it's hard to see uh, with the camera, so I'll simulate the edge of the bench with this board. Put a fence in front and rear, or a barrier, moisture barrier, and redefine that front shoulder. I'm gonna cut a piece of card, the width of that uh, wide groove to put in there for the uh, pressing. Now we're going to put this into the press for maybe an hour and then we'll take it out and leave it dry open. I'll leave it dry open on the bench 
I'll support the text block with a couple of pieces of scrap board and I'll hold the text block block closed with the bulldog clip. There's one last job to do. Now you can see at the moment we've got uh, the end papers, we've got the, the yucky side of the paste paper visible. Now this is normally dealt with, or is often dealt with, with a thing called a made end paper where you stick those two pages together. But that's not very flexible, it's quite stiff. But there's this other technique where you just tip them together at the fore edge and make a flexible made end paper. And that's what we're going to do because this book is all about flexibility. With a bit of PVA, just put a, a 2mm line of uh, adhesive at the end of the page and then just roll the uh, end paper down onto it. Do that front and back and then put uh, a fence in front and back and let it set up under a bit of white. That's the sketchbook done. If you are going to hot foil the front, it's probably best to do that before you case in, but I forgot. But luckily I could, uh, because it folded way back, I could get it into the foiling press. I hope you've enjoyed this project. And as always, if you have, please hit the big thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. And until next time, cheerio.